Uh, we're delighted to welcome into the studio now, we've got Kate Bevan. Uh, she's a social media expert and uh, uh, an anti-bullying program manager at the Diana Award, Alex Holmes, uh, to talk about this investigation that we're running today. And that is that uh, almost 2,000 children have been investigated by police over the last three years. And this is about social media abuse and online bullying. And, and Alex, as a man who's there to deter and, and police and prevent bullying, I'm very interested in your take on this because you're not sure that this is the best thing, that the police ring the doorbell. Well, I'm quite concerned about criminalising young people and some of these young people were under the age that they could even be on social media in the first place. And I'm a little bit worried that perhaps what isn't underpinning this law is the education. You know, similar to perhaps not, not quite the same, but driving offences, we send people on a course to, you know, to learn about their behaviour. You know, where does that intervention come for this? And I'm just a little bit worried that it's quite serious for a young person to carry that label with them for the rest of their life. Here's the other thing. If this happened in the playground, the same level of abuse... Now, I'm not condoning this because it's awful. And, you know, you, you must come across some terrible, terrible cases. But, Kate, from your point of view, I'm just interested in how youngsters maybe see the internet as opposed to older people. Because is there any difference between what they're doing here and then what would happen in the playground? And if it did happen in the playground, would the police become involved? It's a really interesting one, isn't it? I mean, I see social media as just another way to communicate. We've got more channels that we can talk to people, and sometimes we talk to people that we don't know, sometimes we talk to people that we do know. Um, but I think it's important, actually, this is an education thing as much as anything. It's about teaching young people how to use any means of communication sort of safely, politely and responsibly. And it's about behaviour, and social media is just one way of, of, of being horrible to each other, and that's, that's the sad thing, so really whole area there we haven't educated yet we haven't yeah. got in there we haven't prevented this yeah. in, in the first place well at school certainly when my eldest child entered reception they're taught about bullying he came home home and told me about bullying uh, but that's in the playground yeah. he's too young to know about social media yet do schools take a responsibility because certainly if there is any bullying that goes on in school they're very keen to clamp yeah. down on it but set, you know if social media bullying is happening it's not necessarily at school in fact it's most likely not to be mm. so should they be getting more involved should be they be doing the teaching or is it down to Parents. It's both, isn't it? I yeah. mean, you know, when you've got children, everybody who's involved with children has a responsibility to, to educate them, to help them grow up. And one of those things is teaching children not to be bullies if possible and teaching them how to you know, about social media, about how it's used, about how not to be horrible to one another on that and how to use it pr effectively. Absolutely agree. And at the Diana Award, the charity that I work for, we help empower those young people, but more importantly, those responsible adults, those parents, mm. those staff, because they're still learning. You know, we don't quite know social etiquette and how to behave online. And what we've got to understand that, you know, just like in the street, you can't do certain things, you can't treat people a certain way, that attitude has got to be, you know, taken across. Now, I'm interested in you, Tim. I'm interested in your attitude. You two are quite progressive on this. You're quite understanding on on all of this and yet you know if you read uh, the language in newspapers for instance towards trolls what's your view to, towards that would you be equally as understanding uh, towards that sort uh, of you thing? know absolutely it's, it's not okay cyberbullying and when it is uh, grossly offensive and it's a continuous harassment campaign that is not acceptable but what we mustn't forget is there are tools you know one of the most powerful tools out there is the block button it, you know, it solves a lot, a lot I've of things. I've used it three times this morning. Have you already? Yeah, I have. Well, yeah. I have yeah. But I bet you feel you know, quite good in a way. Cause you, you know, I feel like sometimes getting involved in a conversation with them because they're usually from stupid people. Yeah. And then you think, no, they're stupid people and they've got three followers and that's why they've got three followers mm. and you just think, nah, leave it. Leave yeah, it. the block so. button is very powerful. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I was talking um, about something quite controversial a couple of weeks ago and you know, not a huge amount of following, but sort of seven or thousand people following me. And there are some people just being vile. It's just like, do you know what? I don't want to listen to this. I don't have to listen to this. I've had a tweet here from Dave Thompson. He says, social media is just another avenue for those who already bully in other exactly. ways. Is it an extension of real-life behaviour? Or do people hide behind, like you were saying, you know, people who wouldn't dream yeah. of coming up to you in the street and possibly yeah. saying things they do on Twitter some, or other social media? Some of the young media. people that we work for, they have, a, they have a work with, have a term, they call them keyboard warriors. You know, those people, they get a little bit excited, a bit brave behind the screen. Mm. And I think sometimes we do think that we are invisible and invincible. Absolutely, there are consequences to our behaviour online and offline. Uh, but there is that thing the way you, you, you do hide behind the screen and, and mm -hmm. it's a problem. Now, you're not hiding with the Diana Award. Tell me what you do, because I think the, the good thing is, is mm. anybody who is going through this, and it can be intense and it can be awful, and the thing is, Kate, because it is um, technology the way it is, 
it's relentless. It's there 24 hours a day. So it's not like you can bully somebody on the school bus or whatever. And then, and then you're safe at home. No. Yeah. But then that's another thing about learning when to step back from social media. Yes, it's all around mm. us and we can be online talking to people yes. all the time. But there's a lot to be said. I mean, like, I'm one of the worst for that. But there's also a lot to be said for just going, actually, I'm going to turn it off now and not listen to what the rest okay. of the world is what saying. What can you do being there? So I think, I think you're right, you know, there's the, the biggest thing is not to suffer in silence and if nothing is too small or too serious to speak out about, find someone. But there are those tools, every single service provider has block, has reports and there is information out there, you know, on, on our website, the Dan Award website and Anti-Bullying Pro on Twitter, uh, we've got those tools and that information about how you can keep yourself safe. But okay. parents need to have that dialogue too. All very interesting, Alex and Kate, thank you. We'll get reaction to what you have said this morning, we'll reflect that throughout the programme. Leave it there.